Well, good evening. Well, let me get the panelist on the, on the, come, 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 Vijay. You know, in some ways, after the last panel, this panel is redundant. I don't know if you need them, but it's a, it's a beautiful evening. You know, it's so nice to see, particularly my, my friends from Boston and Canada. <clears throat> You, sh you, can, you can applaud even more when you think of the fact that it's minus 10 degrees there. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> huh? yeah, yeah, you can remove it. Yeah, I'll, I'll just stand up. So. <clears throat> well, you know, I think, I think we've spent a, a whole day hearing to a lot of stories, a lot of interventions and everything else. And I think the last few people on the panel pretty much told you what it can be. And so I think I, I just want to talk to a few people here. Bharat, Bharat Desai. Bharat graduated from IIT Bombay, 1975, went to US, built a very large company there with thousands and thousands of employees. And, and so he's, he's, a, he's a big time business guy. But this is his first visit to Hubli. And so, so Bharat has been in Hubli for 48 hours. So Bharat, what is Hubli like? Hi, hi Desh. First of all, um, thank you for inviting me. Um, you know, my expectation coming into Hubli was to find a, um, a sleepy little town and what I found was a vibrant, uh, small city. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised with the capability of all the people I met, f starting from the people who picked me up at the airport, at the hotel, and then at the various centers that we visited yesterday and, and today. And I have no doubt in my mind that whatever this city and its people put their minds to, they can accomplish. So it's, it's, it's really limited only by what they can imagine. I'm pretty confident about that. Thank you, thank you. And then we have with us Honorable Minister Krishna Bhairai Gowda. Krishna graduated from Christian College and then he went to US, got a degree there, and then he worked in the development sector. So he's, he's one of all of us here, because he did work in the development sector before he became a minister. So Krishna, you know, we saw Bhagat Singh, and we have, and Bhagat Singh had a, had a, had a mission, had something to fight for. We have 1,200 Bhagat Singhs here. What should they be fighting for? Afternoon, I was sharing my thought on that. We have a lot of, as you pointed out, very energetic, very bustling youth. India is today known for its demographic dividend, the youth. And that is the strength of our country. That is the aspiration of our country, that whatever the youth in front of us achieve, that will be the achievement of our society as well. So, and they are all Bhagat, in a, Bhagat Singhs in 21st century. The context is different. The challenges are different today. Now we compete in the global space for opportunities. And India has to compete with everybody else. And if these guys can try to be the best at whatever they do, if they can excel in whatever they do, whatever it may be, whatever walk of life they choose to step on, if they're driven to excel, then our country will definitely become great. The aspirations of freedom movement, we will be able to realize if the modern Bhagat Singhs, the youth in front of us, are simply driven to excel in whatever they do. I think uh, uh, Mr. Murthy would perhaps better articulate than I do. In India, one sign of excellence 
is how many patents we file. That's, that's a sign of innovation. You run an innovation incubation center behind us. And innovation is a mark of society's excellence. We file about 28,000 patents. Another country that is pretty dominant and moving forward in the world today, they file about 13 lakh patents a year. So that is the challenge facing the modern Bhagat Singhs, that how can we excel? How can we drive our society? How can we cross through 21st century and put India on top? That's what I see when I look at them. So will you guys do it? OK. So Murthy, uh, you know, Krishna wants them to excel. You've been to over, I don't know, maybe 100 countries. You've seen globally lots of things. If these young people were to globally compete, give them three things that they should really be focusing on. Well, uh, first of all, you have to be open-minded to learn from anybody that has performed better than you. It doesn't matter what country he or she belongs to, what race he or she belongs to, what region he or she belongs to, what language he or she speaks. That's one. Second, we have to become better and better in discipline. This, without discipline, no country has ever achieved anything worthwhile. Therefore, please become more and more and more disciplined. Third, you must aspire higher and higher and higher because our aspirations are our possibilities. If you don't aspire, then you won't even have a chance to achieve half of that. So I would say that these are the three things that I would request every one of you to keep in mind. Thank you. Thank you. And then the fourth panelist we have here is the Chief Secretary of Karnataka. So he is the top man who can make world everything move, right? Right, Chief Secretary? So what So, so you, you've been seeing, you've seen the entrepreneurship center, you've seen the training center. What, what, should, what should we be doing better to prepare these people to be able to push Karnataka forward? Well, I think uh, you're setting up, both uh, Mr. Murthy setting up Infosys, such a beautiful campus here in Hubli, and you're setting up the Deshpande Foundation here in Ubli is a great contribution to Karnataka. Karnataka is Bangalore-centric. Bangalore's population is around 11 million. Next biggest city is Hubli, which is around now 1.2 or so million. So the difference between the two, the ratio is 1 is to 10. Unless Hubli develops, Karnataka will not develop. So your contribution to making Hubli develop is also making Karnataka develop. And that is why I would like, I mean, we are all beholden to Mr. Murthy and to you for setting up this beautiful, two beautiful campuses and for bringing all these people here from different parts of the country to talk to either, each other, exchange ideas and uh, felicitate awardees and learn from, I mean, learn these skills. So, all kudos to you. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, you know, this is all about reimagining impact. <clears throat> so, Bharat, why don't you let your imagination go wild? And what, what, what can you reimagine the future to be? 
Well, Desh, um, let me share an incident from uh, this morning with you. Um, three young girls came to me and excitedly shared with me that they were doing an internship. And they were so excited. So I asked them where they were doing an internship, and they said at the Desh Fande Foundation. And I said, where? And I, they said, in Dharwar. So I said, what do you do? And they were excitedly telling me about the programming they do and, and how, what they're learning, etc. So I said, that's wonderful. So what are you going to do after your internship? So they looked at me and they said, they would take up a job. I said, wonderful. Where will you take up a job? And they said, Bangalore. So I asked myself, how come they want to take up a job in Bangalore and not where they are already? And then I said, perhaps we've defined a tier one, a tier two, and a tier three city for them. We've created a framework, and these people are just following that paradigm that we've set for them, and that's the basis on which they've made a decision. They are looking out for themselves. We've created this pecking order that a tier one city has everything, a tier two or a tier three city and a village is where you come from, but not where you go to. This is, this is what we've taught them. Then I said, I, I thought back to countries like uh, Spain, Italy, France, Switzerland, where people are proud of where they, uh, the, the small towns they live in and come from, and they have no hesitation traveling 60, 70, 80 kilometers to work and back. Those communities are quaint, sometimes quite historic, but they have all modern amenities. So I'm thinking, perhaps it's we who have to reimagine our pecking order of cities. We have to inspire these young people to stay in these towns and with a sense of purpose and pride, reimagine these cities and create a metropolitan areas, create thriving communities that match anywhere in the world. I think that would be a paradigm shift. So everyone gathered here, let's, let's make Hubli into a tier zero city. Better than tier one, right? So, is, is Chandrika still here? Chandrika, the little girl? No? She's already gone back or? Is she here? Oh, I see, I see. That's okay. That's okay. Well, I, I, maybe I'll just open up the floor a little bit because we have another 15, 20 minutes. I know all of you are getting hungry. Uh, what, what questions do you have for these, these people gathered here? You don't have a microphone, but if you, if you just yell, I can, I can repeat the question. Do any of you have any questions for these people? Yeah. Anand. No, no, you, you, can just rip, you can just yell. I'll repeat it for you. Yeah. Yeah. I come from Singapore, and I've been living there for the past 22 years. That's the first world. I worked for the government in Singapore for 15 years. Of, for the past 24, year, 24 hours, I'm asking myself, is Hubli the first world or Singapore the first world? Hey! And so, my question to you is, what can we do to have a business model that will make Desh Pandey Foundation go viral across every college, every university, every Jilla Parishad, every town and every city of India. I think we should not just have one big hub, 
like the one we are having in Hubli, but we should basically multiply this energy and make whole India infectious with the kind of programs that Deshpande has started. So my question to the panel is, do you think that this kind of a viral business model is possible? Thank you. So, so before you answer, I have a request for Deepa, our district commissioner here. Deepa, can we give him a Hubli citizenship? <laughs> so, so what are your thoughts? <laughs> so you, if your question is answered in the affirmative, I will be the happiest person because if we can make this model go viral somehow, then many of our problems are solved. So I don't know, I am willing to uh, discuss with Mr. Deshpande and, and with like-minded friends to see how we can take this uh, and, and spread it around and we can so that get rid of the tier differences and, and make people happy wherever they are. So just to add to that point, thank you, Minister. I suggest, and I would like to volunteer and raise my hand, not just speak, but also uh, walk the talk of setting up Deshpande cells in every college and universities that I am on the advisory board of. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is uh, Veer Narayan Kulkarni. Uh, we run a Millet's restaurant here, and I'm one of the beneficiaries of uh, Deshpande Foundation's sandbox. We are incubated here. So in 2014, uh, when, we wanted, when I wanted to shift my family to Singapore to India, I was looking that for 20 years I was in Bangalore. I thought uh, Bangalore should not be a place where we should go back, and I should come to my roots. And I was looking for one organization. Thank you. And I was looking for one organization which could uh, give me a hope that, uh, yes, we can do some work in the tier two cities. And when I uh, got in touch with Deshpande Foundation, they said that you're welcome here. We will get you something. So I was doing um, Six Sigma black belt job and a PMP job in Singapore. And I started uh, teaching English here when I came to Deshpande Foundation as a consultant. But the job of doing that work was overwhelming. Now, my question. Um, is pertaining to the positive frame of mind that I have after settling down in Hubli and having started an enterprise. Uh, the challenge that I'm facing is, even though I've started this Millet's restaurant and uh, we are helping people reverse their diabetes through yoga and um, lifestyle change, uh, this question to uh, Sri Krishna Bairagoda is on the front of interacting with government and doing more meaningful jobs and the bridge between entrepreneurs and government. I know that you have done a great job in an early stint as the agriculture minister. What is the kind of uh, partnerships you have envisaged for working with entrepreneurs like us? So you are well aware that our entire organic and millet promotion campaign was built with partnerships. So we worked with small businesses. We created a, an ecosystem of demand for millets and organic foods in Karnataka. Now that is spreading around the country, so much so that uh, United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, has decided to have 2023 as the International Year of Millets. So our message, which started from Karnataka, is now uh, spreading to the international level. But all of that campaign was built with partnerships, built with smart partnerships with small and medium organizations, and also a lot of advocacy groups, so, and a lot of public participation. So now going forward, my next task, I want to start discussions on, uh, I meaning our department, our team, around water. Water is so critical. I don't want to talk at the international level, but at the national and at the state level, you know very well that year after year, we are getting hit with droughts. There is a climate change happening, which we don't want to talk about. All of this is having an impact on water. And water is a critical source of life, critical source of sustainability. Without protecting our water sources and 
water conservation, water literacy, efficiency in usage and greening. We can't ensure sustainability of our society. So now I'm looking to build partnerships around the theme of water, starting with literacy, conservation, efficient usage, and better green cover. So that's my next task. We are just doing the groundwork. So we will reach out to all partners, the public, the businesses, various civil society organizations to build another network around the theme of water. That's my way forward. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. I just have one request to make with, on this platform is I request all of you to come and visit this restaurant because we are struggling for yeah. people to know so, this. So just to encourage other people to ask questions, I'm going to give a plug for him. He runs a restaurant called Millet Monk. How many of you have been to Millet Monk? A few hands, but next time we want every hand to go up because it's a, it's a very healthy food and good food. So, Millet Monk. Okay. Hello, sir. Good evening. Uh, it was a wonderful evening today. Huh? Okay. May I, sir? Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's a wonderful evening. It was a lot of uh, remembrance. I am uh, Dr. Prakash. I come from a village called Modga near Belgaum. And all my schooling happened there. We started a manufacturing company in Bangalore. And after five years of uh, uh, beginning, I shifted back to Belgaum. And uh, although our venture uh, has been recognized and awarded uh, on the national platform, we find a lot of challenges in uh, growing a manufacturing concern. I mean. I have a general feeling that other sectors like e-commerce or IT are getting a lot of uh, 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 say visibility, but manufacturing is not. So maybe I'm wrong. So I wanted to understand what uh, section of uh, investment groups or uh, mentoring that we should access so that manufacturing and make in India can also get the required boost. Actually, we have a, we have very, in Karnataka, we have a, a very uh, industry-friendly <coughs> policies for manufacturing. And uh, the, the MSME for uh, medium scale and uh, micro, small and micro enterprises also, we have got uh, policy for encouraging entrepreneurs. So there are, we have all these textile policies is there, then there is a... Uh, so there are many incentives are given under these policies. Of course, the visibility of IT and is high because IT contributes nearly 20% of Karnataka's GDP. So therefore, it is high. In fact, in Karnataka's GDP, now manufacturing is just around 22%. Uh, 66 percent, uh, 60, nearly 68 percent is is the service sector. So therefore, manufacturing is uh, going down in terms of share of Karnataka's GDP. There is a need to increase it, and uh, of course, government has many policies. But I welcome whatever we welcome. Government will welcome any suggestions from you. I mean, we have set up a new directorate of small and medium uh, MFR, MSME to encourage MSMEs. So, whatever uh, there are, many incentives are being given to manufacturing industries to set up in Karnataka. But we find that uh, mostly they are being set up in the raw material sector, for instance, cement industries or steel and iron ore based. So this is based on primary, I mean, mining industry. Bangalore itself is a center for my machine tool industry. Darwad, we have a, a good a vehicle. Uh, Tata Motors is there, which is, uh, so that could be a nucleus for a good um, a manufacturing industry here. Because new IIT is being set up in Dharwad, IIIT is being set up in Dharwad, IIIT of course is again IT. 
but i hope all these things will increase the focus on manufacturing great well thank you i think we have yeah. another question there yeah hello everyone uh, myself architects putti here i run a uh, firm called kabur architects i choose uh, hubli as my workplace i left my job and started my firm here i just wanted to ask you how we as a architect can work with you as a volunteer like you know uh, involve your uh, programs how i can uh, be a part of you uh, su just suggest me please oh so so your question is how can you be a part of all of this well we need architects to architect everything right yes architecture isn't just architecture of bricks and iron you know everything is an architecture yes and and we would love to have you come and work with the students with entrepreneurs with with everything that we do you know i think it's just a question of everybody in this audience here coming together and and sharing ideas and motivating each other inspiring each other and that's how we're going to create a city that's better than bangalore thank you thank you thank you oh. well chandrika has a question here and it's going to be a difficult question so be ready kathin question kare dena hello sir nan hesru chandr hello sir my name is chandrika i am from wasan i am studying in 7th standard ivat nan ishtu dodda stage mag nintin andre adak desh pande foundation na karna na desh pande foundation ne olaga hachin nan english baratetti namma kelavond ishta halli olaga ashta ee skill in village program aithi idanna ella namma bharata dadyanta ella halli olagu ee skill in village program anna it ಕೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಆ ಎಲ್ಲ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಗೂ ಯೂಸ್ ಆಗ್ತೈತಿ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿಂತ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಲಿಂತ ಯಾವ ಥರ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಸಿಗ್ಬೋದು ನಮಗೆ ವಾ ಹೌ ಡು ಯು ರೀ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ನಾವು ಮಧ್ಯಾಹ್ನ ಮಾತಾಡಿದ್ದೇವೆ ದೇಶಪಾಂಡೆ ಅವರ ಹತ್ರ ನಾವು ಮತ್ತು ನಮ್ಮ ಚೀಫ್ ಸೆಕ್ರೆಟ್ರಿ ಅವರು ವಿಜಯ್ ಭಾಸ್ಕರ್ ಅವರು ಸೊ as and when they are ready to scale up government is ready to partner with them to scale up across the colleges so now the challenge is on mr desh pande how fast he wants to scale so we have put the ball back in your court as and when you are ready to uh, scale up our chief secretary has already made an offer to you that we will ask all those colleges government colleges to partner with you we are ready from our side right right so we got to we got we only have 700 people in the foundation so we need all of you so so make sure that you all volunteer help scale these programs to not just a few villages but everywhere so okay you get to say hello sir uh, just just one minute yeah <laughs> all right um hi i'm from canada my my friends here well, well why are you guys so loud Okay. Yeah, we love Hubli, that's why. Um, first, thank you all so much for coming and for the insights on the panel. I had a question for Mr. Murthy. Sir, um, I'm wondering what was the event or the catalyst that essentially brought Infosys from a small or medium-sized company to the scale that it is now and how we can apply that as we're trying to build companies for the future. well i think as i said earlier there are four or five things that we followed right from day one one is being open to new ideas second is meritocracy third is creating an environment of fairness and justice or consequently discussion and debate next is speed focus on how we can do faster today compared to yesterday or last month last year then focus on imagination or innovation what is it that we can do 
faster, better, cheaper today compared to yesterday. And finally, whatever we do, do it with discipline and achieve excellence and compare with the best global standard. You may not be, we may not be there, but the moment we start comparing ourselves with the best global standard, at least we know the direction in which we want to march, and that gives us more and more confidence as we move towards our competitors. I would say that's the, that's what we have done. Thank you, thank you. So, you know, Minister Krishna Bhairagauda has to catch the Rani Chanamma. So, we're going to take the last question. So, the last question better be very good. Is it good? Yes. Okay, let's go for it. So, this question is for Bharat, sir. Ba for whom? Bharat Desai. Okay. Okay. So, he said we have to change the mental framework of tier 1 and tier 2 cities. So, I want to know if there are corporates out there who are willing to take the risk and invest in tier 2 cities. Like how Infosys has done this in Hubli and Mangalore. So are there corporates out there? I do understand corporates are in the VUCA environment where they're also facing a lot of challenges. But are they willing to take a long-term investment into uh, account? Yep. And are they willing to invest for us? Okay, Bharat, you're on the hot seat now. You know, I think um, what, what, the, what all of you have to do is um, take it upon yourselves to find opportunities to attract ideas into, into the um, uh, city. Um, today, you know, 48 hours ago, I knew nothing about Hubli. But having spent 48 hours here, I know that this, the, all of you can accomplish whatever you, you would like to. So I think together, the city, the planning group, the university, Desh Pandey Foundation, you got, we, together you need to put up a plan for how to accomplish and set goals, set a five-year goal and then set measurable goals for each year. And you can definitely accomplish uh, you know, what you set out to do. But I think my point was actually larger than that. Um, it's not making hoobly a Bangalore or a Bombay. It's making Hubli Hubli. A much better Hubli than it is. Okay, and I think, um, and, and that should go for every city, like in every, every town, every little village. Because anybody from that town or village should be proud to be where they are and work in that, in that place. That would be achieving the dream. So that's what you have to work towards. Hello, you know, you know let are, me, uh, one minute, let me add a, a little bit. You know, you, everybody here has to realize that Hubli is going to be made a better place, not by some outsider, fellows in Bangalore or some Silicon Valley or this or that, no. Hubli will have to be made a better city by people from Hubli, like, like Desh is doing. You know, I'll, I'll tell you a story. There was a Polish uh, writer who was migrating to United States in 1905. So on the ship, Everybody was telling him, oh, you know, the streets of New York are paved with gold, fantastic place, this, that. And he writes, when I landed at Ellis Island, that's where people used to land those days, I realized three truths. One, the streets of New York were not paved with gold. Second, the streets of New York were not paved at all. And number three, I was imported to pave the streets of New York. <laughs> the point is, the point is simply this. You are the ones, the youth here are the ones that will make Hubli 
an extraordinary place. You already have a role model in Desh. You don't need uh, anything else. So start asking a problem, asking what are the problems that we see around us. For example, when I went around Hubli, you know, I was a little bit disappointed to see so much of muck around. In spite of all our, this Swachh Bharat and all of that. A simple thing is, if you youngsters were to sit down, go to the municipality and say, folks, why don't we keep our city clean? Run a campaign. Go from home to home and tell people how to collect garbage and put it in a proper place. I think there are so many simple things that you can do. Demand of your legis of your corporators that the roads are maintained better. Frankly, the roads are pretty good in Hubli today compared to when I was here last. So the, the most important thing you people have to remember is that you are the ones who will make Hubli a paradise, not some outsiders. So think about how you can become proactive problem recognizers and problem solvers. That's the most important thing. Excellent.